the 2022 NFL Draft is just days away. We've got you guys covered with our Mock Draft 3.0 prior to players' dreams becoming a reality in Las Vegas on April 28th. Welcome, everyone, to a brand new episode of Time to Football. Glad you guys are able to join us. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this channel, Time to Football. You're joining us for Mock Draft 3.0, the final mock draft prior to that first round. We came out with two previous versions. If you guys want to, you can go back to our channel. Check that out if you do so, please. If not, you can just watch this video, and we'll get you guys covered on all the news and the notes and the rumors that's going around the league prior to the draft because teams are interested in certain players that we want to get you guys caught up on. This mock draft will be prior to our live draft reaction show. That is next week on Thursday, April 28th. Throughout the first round, you guys can join us and give your thoughts live as we are giving our reactions as well. So watch the draft on your TV and go head over to YouTube. Make sure you guys set a reminder that on April 28th, we've got our live draft reaction show. You can chat with us. You can even call into the show and join us live and give your take on your favorite team. So set a reminder, April 28th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the start of the first round. But today's episode, like I said, final mock draft. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go pick by pick with each team. Uh, just a couple things to note before we get started. One, this isn't going to be 100% accurate. I think all mock drafts out there that analysts and scouts and all of them come out with, only 5 to 10 end up being correct. So just keep that in mind. Just giving you a heads up, this is just... Uh, what I think each general manager is going to do, depending on who's still available on the board. We've also got trades available as well that we've mocked, and I think there's four to five trades that we project in the first round, which we're going to be talking with you guys about that. Um, and the second thing is just interact with us. I love interacting with you guys. I love hearing uh, what you guys are saying about your favorite team. So make sure you guys uh, leave your comments and leave your thoughts and your opinions on uh, your favorite team, and 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 do you think that this will happen in the uh, NFL draft? Uh, let's go ahead and get started with pick number one. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we said in a previous mock draft, it's between Trayvon Walker and Aiden Hutchinson at this point on who's going to be number one. I still believe that it's going to be Aiden Hutchinson that is going to be drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the reason being is because Early on, probably around January, Aiden Hutchinson was being talked about being the number one player in this draft. However, Evan Neal slipped into the conversation because it's like, okay, well, the Jaguars need an offensive tackle. So it's between Aiden Hutchinson, Evan Neal. Evan Neal eventually just phased out. He fizzled out. So it was just Hutchinson. Well, then Trayvon Walker climbs up draft boards, and people are talking about, oh, maybe it's Walker. This could be the number one pick. With Evan Neal being phased out, Hutchinson has been the one constant that is, a route, uh, that is revolving around the number one pick. I still think that's going to be true, and I think that Trayvon Walker is going to miss out on that number one spot. It's going to be Aiden Hutchinson from Michigan being drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Number two. Well, if one person is not number one, then you would expect them to be number two at that point. So Trayvon Walker, I expect to be drafted by the Detroit Lions. This isn't the biggest need in the world for the Detroit Lions. I mean, they've got some holes to fill as far as like linebacker and corner, offensive line. Uh, but Trayvon Walker is just being talked about being a number one draft prospect so or number one pick overall. So uh, if he doesn't get taken by the Jacksonville Jaguars, I would assume that the Detroit Lions would take the second best player that's available in the draft, and that would be Trayvon Walker. So I've got Walker being drafted by the Detroit Lions at number two. Now moving on to number three. Okay, in my previous mock draft that we came out with uh, last week, I said that Kyle Hamilton was going to get drafted by the Houston Texans. Now, that has changed because of the pro day that he had, because of the 40-yard dash not being as great as people thought it was going to be, and that caused him to fall a little bit in draft boards. I'm going to say the Houston Texans pass up on him, and they draft the best available offensive tackle. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be Iki Iquanu or Evan Neal? Well, my rankings here, it's based off of not my opinion. I, I don't know anything about college football. I don't do the research on like watching the film and anything like that. What I do is I look at what scouts are saying from different websites, different platforms, and I come up with a consensus ranking sheet based off of what the majority is saying. And it's so close 
between Evan Neal and Iki Iguanu, but just by a sliver, Evan Neal is ranked as the highest offensive tackle. So I believe that the Houston Texans are going to take the best offensive tackle, which is going to be Evan Neal. Uh, this is actually wonderful for the Texans because they get their offensive line help early on. And then at pick 13, it's all about, okay, taking who's the next best available player because the Texans, they have a lot of holes to fill on a lot of uh, a lot of sides of the ball. So uh, the Texans fix their offensive line. They're all in on Davis Mills. Get him that help. Number three, Evan Neal. Pick number four, the New York Jets. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been saying it's Ahmad Gardner. I'm going to stick with that. So Mock Draft 1.0, Ahmad Gardner. Mock Draft 2.0, Ahmad Gardner. 3.0, Ahmad Gardner. And the reasoning behind this is if you didn't watch our previous Mock Drafts, it's because the Giants pick number five and number seven, the two teams that have high interest, according to rumors out there, the New York Jets and the New York Giants. And the Jets specifically, they want to grab Ahmad Gardner before the Giants grab him. Because if they don't grab him at number four, he's not going to be around at number 10 because the Giants love him so much. So grab him at number four. And then another guy that the Jets are interested in is Jermaine Johnson. So I believe that the two picks that the Jets are going to try to strive for are uh, Amadi Gardner with the number four pick, and then hopefully with the number 10 pick, if Jermaine Johnson is still around, the New York Jets grab Johnson. So number four, Ahmad Gardner. Number five, the New York Giants. Oh, man, we just missed out on Ahmad Gardner. What are we doing at this point? Well, we've got some holes to fill. Evan Neal has been taken. Why not just take the next best available offensive lineman, which is Iki Ikuanu? And listen, if the Texans take Ikuanu, then the Giants take Evan Neal. So I, I, I think the Giants just take one of those two guys between Neal and Ikuanu here at number five. Uh, so the Giants fix their offensive line. And at number five, they pick offensive tackle. Pro and this is prior to the Carolina Panthers as well, who picked number six, who are rumored to be talking about taking an offensive tackle. So you don't want to wait on offensive tackle at number five or wait till number seven because the Panthers might grab Iguanu at that point. But speaking of number six, we've got the Carolina Panthers. This is an interesting one. So in last week's mock draft, I think it was Iki Iguanu that was drafted uh, in, in my mock draft. Well, the Carolina Panthers, I think if Iguanu is still there, I think that they go with Iguanu here at number six. But there's been rumors out there in the last couple of weeks, according to reports, that the Panthers are interested in trading down to acquire more picks. The reason being is because the Carolina Panthers do not have any picks in the second and in the third round. So it's a first rounder and then a fourth rounder is your next pick. So they want to trade down. They want to acquire more picks. And a player that is falling on the draft board, Kayvon Thibodeau. And some teams are high on him. Some teams are not. So if the Panthers want to trade down, a team that wants to trade up to try to get Kayvon Thibodeau, the Baltimore Ravens. We talked about this trade in last week's mock draft, but I said that it was with the New York Giants at number seven. I'm going to say with the news coming out that the Carolina Panthers want to trade down, acquire more picks, the Ravens trade up to number six and draft Kayvon Thibodeau. What does this trade look like for both teams? For the Panthers... They, they acquire picks. They trade down. The Ravens to move up. I hate to say it, Baltimore fans, but to move up eight spots in the first round, especially inside of the top 10, it's going to cost you a first round pick for next year. And I think that the Ravens are okay with that. So it might cost uh, the number 14 spot here, a first round pick for next year. And then you can throw in a third round pick if you want, because you have two third round picks. A realistic compensation that could happen, the 14 spot, First round next year, and the third round pick to move on up to the number six spot and grab Kayvon Thibodeau. If you're a Ravens fan, leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I know that last week we, we mocked that uh, trade for the Ravens, and everybody loved it. Uh, yeah, so if you're a Panthers fan as well, like let me know your thoughts. I, I would love to hear your opinion. Uh, here at number seven, the New York Giants. Uh, the biggest need for them... Uh, there's rumors out there saying that with the two picks that the Giants have between number five and number seven, they would love to go offensive tackle and cornerback with those two picks. 
You missed out on Ahmad Gardner. The Jets grabbed him. Oh, crap. Well, who's the next best available cornerback? Derek Stingley? Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad pick. I, I Stingley, I think, is a, is a good player. But the Giants are like, uh, who's this guy, Kyle Hamilton, that is falling? Why is he falling? Oh, because his 40-yard dash was not that good? Well, I mean, he's regarded as one of the better players in this draft. We need corner over safety, but let's just go ahead and take Kyle Hamilton. I think if we pair him up with maybe Xavier McKinney, uh, we should be fine. So I think that the Giants draft Kyle Hamilton here just because he's falling. I don't think that Kyle Hamilton is going to fall outside of the top 10. I know some people have him going to like the the Commanders or maybe even the Minnesota Vikings at number 12. I highly doubt that's going to happen. I, I think Kyle Hamilton is too good of a talent to fall. It's out of the top 10, and I think the New York Giants are aware of that, and they're going to grab Kyle Hamilton with the number seven pick. So with the two picks for the New York Giants, it is uh, Iki Iguanu and Kyle Hamilton. Help your offense, help your defense. I think that's a pretty good draft for the New York Giants in the first round. Uh, the next pick, we've got the number eight pick with the Atlanta Falcons. Here's an interesting thing about the Falcons. There's two players that I could imagine them getting here with a number eight pick. One is Jermaine Johnson, who they highly value. I think the Falcons and the Jets are the two teams that value Jermaine Johnson the most. Another player is Garrett Wilson, a wide receiver. You need help on on both spots, edge rush and wide receiver. I think that the Jets are aware that the Falcons are interested in Jermaine Johnson. And I think that general manager of the Jets, Joe Douglas. Hello? I don't know how Earth or Blank sounds. Hey, this is Joe Douglas. I don't know how Joe Douglas sounds. Uh, Would you be interested in trading down a couple of spots? We'll give you a second round pick. And I believe that's going to happen. I believe that the Jets are going to move from number 10 up to number 8 with the Atlanta Falcons to move up two spots so that not only they prevent the Falcons from drafting Jermaine Johnson by, you know, kind of sugarcoating them with a second round pick, but also jumping the Seattle Seahawks and making sure that they don't get Jermaine Johnson. So the Jets, they trade their number 10 pick and their sixth pick in the second round to move up two spots with the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons, they take that. They're like, all right, yeah, like we need help in a lot of different areas. I know that Joe Douglas loves Jermaine Johnson a whole lot. He's willing to trade a second round pick. So if we just go down two spots, we get an additional second round pick which we already have two second-round picks to begin with. So now we have three second-round picks? Done. Deal. Hang up the phone. The Jets move up, and they grab Jermaine Johnson with that eighth pick. So with the two picks for the New York Jets, they get their dream guys. They get Ahmad Garner, who they really love, and they get Jermaine Johnson, who they really love as well. Good trade for both. I think it's a win-win. I really do. Leave your comments down below. If you're a fan of either one of those teams, I'd love to hear your opinion on the Jets moving up with the Atlanta Falcons. Now at number nine, we've got the Seattle Seahawks. All right, they missed out on Kayvon Thibodeau, which the Ravens moved up. They needed an edge rusher. They missed out on Jermaine Johnson as well. Uh, There's two players I could see them getting here with a number nine pick, one being Derek Stingley, and then another player being um, Charles Cross or whoever the best offensive tackle is at this point. Uh, I'm going to say Charles Cross is getting drafted uh, here by the Seattle Seahawks. And Cross could be a huge asset for that Seattle Seahawks offensive line. Uh, Pete Carroll, we mentioned this before, has talked a whole lot of game about Drew Locke. I don't know if he's going to be the week one starter. Could be, could be not. But uh, he's been talking a lot about Drew Locke, how, yes, we do believe that he could still be a very good player in the NFL. Uh, And if, you know, you want to wait till the second round or whenever to draft a quarterback, sure. Uh, For now, if, You know, the worst case scenario, if you can't grab the quarterback of your future, grab an offensive lineman of your future. And that is Charles Cross here at number nine. Now at number 10, we had the Falcons trading down with the New York Jets. Again, we mentioned that they get an additional second round pick out of that. And I believe that the Falcons are treating this pick as best case scenario, like who or who's the best player available at this point. Uh, You could go, well, I mean, many people's draft boards might be Derek Stingley, but you already signed Casey Hayward. You have AJ Terrell. I don't think corner is that big of a need. Might be your strongest position on that team. So I think that the Falcons here go in the direction of adding weapons for their offense, and that is Garrett Wilson. You could also talk about maybe Malik Willis, who's 
linked to Atlanta. He's an Atlanta boy as well. Uh, grew up in Roswell, Georgia. You could say that he could be the next Falcons franchise quarterback here with a number 10 pick. However, uh, when they traded Matt Ryan, they immediately signed Marcus Moriota within a matter of 45 minutes. And I think it's because they had an idea in their mind. They said, okay, we're willing to get rid of Matt Ryan because this guy who not a lot of people are looking at is still available on the free agent market. We're going to sign him as soon as we give him up. So I think they're okay with rolling with Marcus Mariota. If you can't grab a quarterback later on in the draft, I think they're okay rolling with him. So just give him some offensive help. You don't know the future of Calvin Ridley as well. And then with the second round picks as well, you have three of them with this trade with the New York Jets. One of the guys that you're interested in is, is uh, Isaiah Spiller. If you need a running back, the Falcons are rumored to be interested in him. Uh, they're interested in Desmond Ritter as well. They're interested in uh, may, maybe Matt Corral falls uh, at the top of the second. Who knows? So the, I, I think the Falcons can address a quarterback uh, position later on in the second round. For now, get your weapon, get Garrett Wilson, help out that offense. Now, pick 11, the Washington Commanders. I, I, I've thought about different scenarios here. I know that Derek Stingley is uh, another guy that could be drafted by the Commanders. I don't think that they go in the direction of corner. I think they desperately need wide receiver with all the drama going on. I'm going to explain that in a bit. But let me just go ahead and say that the Commanders are drafting the second best wide receiver in this class, according to the scouts, and that is Drake London. Drake, a big guy, hard to bring down. Uh, kind of reminds me of uh, either a tight end in, in open space or uh, maybe a Mike Williams kind of guy where he's just like a tall, big receiver. And if he's on one-on-one -on -one coverage, I. Uh, most of the time, most of the time, he can win that battle. Uh, so the explanation behind them getting a receiver here is uh, with all the news going on with Debo Samuel and Devontae Adams and Stephon Diggs, Tyree Kale, like all these big receivers, like in their contract situation, AJ Brown as well, scrubbed the Tennessee Titans from his social media. Like all this news that's going on, I think that they want to lock in their wide receiver because the news with Terry McLaurin surrounding him is does he deserve a big contract? For the Washington Commanders, he could be doing the same thing as all of these other guys, where he just scrubs the Commanders from the uh, social media, which isn't hard to do because they've only been around for like what three or four months. Scrub the Washington Football Team, this whole franchise, off of his social media. Demand a trade, demand to hold out until we get signed long term, whatever it may be. I don't think that they want to take any risk with that. So if crap hits the fan, if everything goes south, they at least have their franchise wide receiver in Drake London. And if Terry McLaurin resigns with the Commanders, then you have two great wide receivers for Carson Wentz. So that's the explanation behind the Commanders picking Drake London. Now, number 12 is an interesting spot because the rumors, to, just to let you guys know, is that the Minnesota Vikings are interested in trading down. They are listening to offers right now. One team that is very interested in trading up, the LA Chargers. The Vikings and the Chargers have had talks about switching from 12 to 17. At number 12, the Minnesota Vikings may look at the draft board, and if this draft falls into place like it has right now, Derek Stingley is still available on that board. One of the weak points for the Minnesota Vikings last season was the secondary. Derek Stingley, I believe, is going to get drafted by the Minnesota Vikings here. I believe that they stay put. I know that they want to trade down. I know that's a rumor. I know that they're tempted, uh, but I, I think with a good corner like Derek Stingley still available, you got to take Stingley. And I know that they value Trent McDuffie as well. This is a little bit of knowledge for you. The Minnesota Vikings uh, value Trent McDuffie, the second best corner in this class, just as much as Derek Stingley. But there's no guarantee that if you trade down from 12 to 17 that he's going to be around. Because you look at the teams uh, that are going to be taken uh, or drafting ahead of them if they drop to number 17. you got the New Orleans Saints. you got the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, they, The Houston Texans as well. They could very much take... Uh, you know, these teams could take two corners back to back. It could be Derek Stingley and Trent McDuffie. So you never know. Uh, so I think the Minnesota Vikings play it safe here. I think that they go in the direction of Derek Stingley with the number 12 pick. Now with the number 13 pick, I kind of went back and forth on this, to be honest with you. I did not know whether to take Jordan Davis or Trent McDuffie with the 13th pick. Um, I, I, I think that they consider Jordan Davis. I really do. But there's some really good defensive tackles out there that they could draft at the top of the second. And that could be um, DeMarvin Leal, um, 
who else is out there? Travis Jones maybe might fall into the second round. Logan Hall. So there, there are some pretty good guys out there that you could draft in the top of the second. But I do think that the first two picks, or this pick and then the, the next pick in the second round for the Houston Texans is going to be cornerback and defensive tackle. And I do think that they go in the direction of Trent McDuffie here because he's the second best available cornerback. They want to lock in their, their guy of the future, their hopeful man-to-man guy, and then they can address a defensive tackle position later on in the draft. So, uh, like I said, the Houston Texans team needs a lot of help in a lot of different areas, but I think Trent McDuffie is a start uh, for this defense. But to recap, the first round for the Houston Texans at this point, you've got uh, Evan Neal on the offensive line for the number three pick, and then Trent McDuffie on the defense and the secondary with the number 13 pick. If you're a Texans fan, what are your thoughts? Do you think that's a pretty good first round for the Texans? Uh, number 14, this is a very interesting one because we had the Baltimore Ravens trading up and trading their future first rounder to move on up to the number six spot to get Kayvon Thibodeau. The Panthers fall down here to number 14. I do think that the, fa- the Panthers are also tempted again to trade down because they get an additional third round pick is what we mocked from the Baltimore Ravens, but they don't have a second round pick. They would love to have a second round pick. But I think that they're going to stay put with a number 14 pick because I think that the pressure from the media is going to get to them and they're going to crack. This is going to be the first quarterback taken off the board in a consensus ranking based off of what all the scouts are saying. The majority of scouts have Kenny Pickett labeled as the best quarterback in this draft. So I believe that the Panthers draft Kenny Pickett here to be the quarterback of the future. And here's the explanation. The smartest move, smartest, would be for the Panthers to draft Trevor Penning. Penning is being talked about, hey, this is a top 15 talent that could fall just barely inside of the top 20. You need offensive line. You need offensive tackle. Draft Trevor Penning. Do it. But I think with the Panthers not drafting until the third round, if this trade were to occur, even worse, the fourth round if this trade doesn't happen, and with the pressure that they've been getting from the media, with all the news surrounding uh, Robbie Anderson saying no underneath uh, a post talking about Baker Mayfield potentially being the quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, uh, all this pressure from Sam Darnold appearing on Bussin' with the boys talking about how He's a great quarterback, and he deserves to be the starter. This All this pressure, I think that they really want to. Uh, David Tepper is a guy that really loves his fan base and really wants to please his fan base, uh, hence why he was going after Deshaun Watson, who's a Clemson guy, wants to bring in that hometown fan base. I, I, I think that they, crave, they, they cave under that pressure, and they draft a quarterback, and I think that the, that guy is going to be Kenneth Pickett. Personally, this is just me personally, I th- I think you'd go Trevor Penning here. But again, I'm drafting in the mind of the general manager and the situation going on. So, Panthers fan, Kenny, Kenny Pickett, your quarterback of the future. Number 15, hey, trade alert. We've got another trade happening in this draft. So far, so far, we've had two trades. The Jets moving up with the Falcons and the Ravens moving up with the Panthers. The Eagles... I believe, are going to move down from the number 15 spot with another team that has two first-round picks. Not the Kansas City Chiefs, the Green Bay Packers. The Packers have no wide receiver help. I mean, Sammy Watkins, sure. But they want to get their guy of the future at the next best available wide receiver, according to uh, scouts and analysts, it is Jameson Williams. So I am mocking a trade between the Packers and the Eagles. The Packers trade their 22nd and their 28th pick for the number 15 pick. The Eagles, they acquire those two picks. So the Eagles, for them, they go back to having three first-round picks. For the Packers, at the end of the day, they traded Devontae Adams for Jameson Williams and a second-round pick. Not a bad trade. Not a bad trade, I would say. So I think the Packers are happy moving up and getting some weapons for Aaron Rodgers to replace that void of uh, Devontae Adams. Also, they want to jump with the Eagles because the Saints, who are at number 16, 
are interested in a wide receiver and they don't want them to grab the next best available wide receiver. So now you've got the Saints at number 16. Now two positions that the Saints need to become a playoff contender, offensive tackle and wide receiver. I believe that's one of the reasons why they acquired two first round picks because they want to hit both. Wide receivers are dropping like crazy with Jameson Williams, with uh, Drake London, Garrett Wilson, all these guys gone. And I think that the Saints in their position, a guy that they really love on the offensive line is Tyler Smith. He could play guard. He could play tackle. Uh, they need to fill in that void for Teron Armstead. Smith could be like a late first rounder, maybe a second rounder. So I believe the Saints are okay passing up on offensive linemen with the number 16 pick because they're so interested in Tyler Smith that they could target him in the second round. But for now, you got to make sure that you lock in a wide receiver. And let's go ahead and get Chris Alave for the New Orleans Saints, uh, wide receiver for the for Ohio State. And I, I believe that they go with wide receiver here because the Eagles are going to be picking at number 18 uh, ahead of the Saints with their number 19 pick. So you got to make sure that you lock in that wide receiver for sure, for good, uh, before maybe someone else takes him and then you're in a bad spot. So Chris Alave is going to be the future franchise wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints. That's our pick for number 16. So here at number 17, I, I think that the Saints are aware of this. They pass up on Trevor Penning because they're so invested in Tyler Smith. Uh, and, and I know it was kind of a gamble for the Saints. They, so I could see them picking Trevor Penning at number 16. The Saints have to be like, all right, we accept defeats. Chargers, you can have them. And I believe that's exactly what the Chargers are going to be doing. They grabbed Trevor Penning. So it ended up being a good move for the Chargers not to trade up with the Minnesota Vikings. Because if they traded up to that number 12 spot, they would have grabbed Trevor Penning. Because offensive tackle to replace the need or the loss of Brian Bulaga is pretty much the only thing that's keeping you from becoming potentially a Super Bowl contender. Because your defense is so freaking amazing that you added all these pieces in the offseason. All you need is just an offensive line to, to, to protect Justin Herbert. They get that with Trevor Penning. This is a dream come true. Many people believe that Trevor Penning is shooting up draft boards. It is not going to fall outside of the top 15. He does here at number 17, and they get their future franchise offensive tackle. Trevor Penning through the Chargers would make the Chargers a dangerous team. Now at number 18, the Philadelphia Eagles, the one of three first-round picks. Keep that in mind because they traded with the Green Bay Packers. They are eyeing Jordan Davis and Devontae White. You might be like, really? Like, they don't necessarily need defensive tackle? Like, there's other things. Like, get a wide receiver. Get a, you, you know, there's other positions you need to address. But they are eyeing Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt. And those guys are going to be gone probably by the time pick number 22 comes around for the Philadelphia Eagles. So they want to go ahead and grab those guys. Uh, many people have Wyatt over Davis, Davis over Wyatt. M the majority of the scouts, many people are saying it's Jordan Davis by a sliver. So let's just say that the Eagles are going to draft Jordan Davis to be their defensive tackle, uh, fill in that void for maybe Fletcher Cox. I think that's one of the reasons why they want to uh, address that position because Fletcher Cox, we don't know what his future is going to look like for the Philadelphia Eagles. Prepare for the future. Get Jordan Davis. Uh, and, and I'm excited to watch Jordan Davis play. He's, he's an animal. So he's going to help out the def that defense of the Philadelphia Eagles in the trenches. Now the New Orleans Saints, again, at number 19. This is interesting. You missed out on offensive lineman and Trevor Penning. Maybe you could grab Kenyon Green, but he's not really – he's a guard more so than a tackle. Zion Johnson has experience at tackle. Maybe you could grab Zion Johnson. Or maybe Malik Willis, question mark? I, I, I think there a lot of things are going to process through the minds of the New Orleans Saints. I think that's a, a few guys that the Saints are going to be thinking about here at number 19. I am going to say that the Saints, however, go with the fact that you need to grab the best defensive player available or the best player available on this board right now. And right now, according to this board, it is Devontae Wyatt. So I'm going to say that the Saints do pick Devontae Wyatt. Uh, I know that uh, many people that are Saints fan might be confused with this pick. Like, why Devontae Wyatt? I don't understand that. We don't need defensive tackle. We need offensive lineman, wide receiver. Again, just to reiterate... They're going after Tyler Smith in the second round. They really like Tyler Smith. They feel like he's going to fill in for that Teron Armstead loss. Okay, so don't get caught up 
and just the first round, and that's it, and it's over. Their draft is not over. They're going to get an offensive lineman in the second round. Grab the best available defensive player. You could say you don't need a defensive tackle, but Shy Tuttle, who would you rather have, Devontae Wyatt or Shy Tuttle? There you go. Devontae Wyatt, drafted by the New Orleans Saints. Number 20. I think the rumors are out there. I think the news is saying it as well, and I think that is going to happen that the Pittsburgh Steelers do draft a quarterback, and it is going to be Malik Willis, who has ties to Pittsburgh. There's high interest between the Steelers and Malik Willis. The Steelers grab Malik Willis to be the quarterback. There's not really much of an explanation here. I mean, you need a quarterback of the future. Mitch Trubisky could be your guy for 2022, but then 2023 moving forward, it could potentially be Malik Willis. So I, I do believe with the first-round pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers do draft Malik Willis. Uh, here at number 21, the New England Patriots. This is one player that has not changed in all of my mock drafts. It is Devin Lloyd, uh, the linebacker from Utah. I do believe that he's going to get drafted by the New England Patriots. If it's not him, then it's going to be N'Kobe Dean. Because whichever linebacker goes on this Patriots defense, you can expect a few Pro Bowls out of their career uh, in the NFL. They need linebacking help with the loss of Kyle Van Noy, uh, with the loss of uh, Jamie Collins, with Dante Hightower. I even said last year they need a linebacker. So I, in my mock, I had them getting Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa. They didn't get him. He fell in the second round. So I think that they do address their linebacking position, and they do get uh, a linebacker here. Uh, so for number 22, this was owned by the Green Bay Packers. But if you remember that trade, this is now given to the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to go ahead and say that the Eagles are going to draft the next best available linebacker because they do need linebacking help, and that is going to be N'Kobe Dean. I came out with uh, this mock draft last week, and there were some Eagles fans that were kind of upset, like, hey, we don't need help at linebacker. Uh, I mean, Kaiser White, you need a linebacker. Like, this is going to help. This is going to be your guy for the future, for the next 10 years or so. Uh, it's going to be a stud linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now here at number 23, all right, uh, two players that I could see the Arizona Cardinals getting. One, whoever the best offensive lineman is at this point, or two, George Koloftis from Purdue, because they need to address the loss of Chandler Jones at the defensive end position. I think Koloftis is tempting, but I think the downfall of what the Cardinals was last year was not really so much the defensive line, uh, the defense, it was more so the offensive line. Like after that 7 0 game winning streak, it, it, it was. Kyler Murray was just running around everywhere. Like, he could not get a lot of time in the pocket. He had to scramble a lot. And maybe a lot of that has to do with the tendencies and the playing style of Kyler Murray, but he was not getting any help in the offensive line. So I do believe at this point, at number 23, they do grab the next best available offensive lineman. And on the draft board right now, it is Kenyon Green, the guard from uh, Texas A&M. They need to replace Chandler Jones, like I said, but you need to help out Kyler Murray and that offensive line. So Kenyon Green is going to be the pick by the Arizona Cardinals. Now here at number 24, the Jerry Jones-led Dallas Cowboys. Oh my gosh, what are they thinking? What could happen? You need a wide receiver, right? I rub my eyes every time I pick up for the Dallas Cowboys because I'm like, what the heck are they thinking all the freaking time? Uh, last year ended up being a good pick. They didn't really need Micah Parsons, but it ended up being a success uh, for the Dallas Cowboys in that, in that defense. Uh, so they picked the next best available player. So if players like... Uh, Devontae Wyatt falls. Maybe they could pick George Koloftis, but you lost two key pieces on that offensive line, and that was Connor Williams and L. Collins. A tackle and a guard. Hey, who's an offensive lineman? The next best available offensive lineman that could play either guard or tackle It is Zion Johnson. So I think that Jerry Jones avoids the, the media attention and the news and the rumors saying that he's going to draft a wide receiver here. You have CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup. I don't know why you need a receiver. And they do the smart thing, and they grab the next best available offensive lineman. That's just me having hope for the Dallas Cowboys that they do the smart thing. So I don't I don't think that they're dumb at all. Listen, it could be a situation like back in 2014 when they grabbed Zach Martin over Johnny Manziel. And people are like, oh, this is a trash pick. You should have grabbed Johnny Manziel. Ended up being a fantastic pick for the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones, please think of that memory. Please do not grab a wide receiver here. Do the smart thing. Address the offensive line. So Dallas Cowboys, Zion Johnson. Number 25, the Buffalo Bills. In my previous mock, 
I explained that Brees Hall would be the first running back taken off the board and would be drafted by the Buffalo Bills. And the reason being is because Devin Singletary rushed for 10 or rushed for 26 yards off 10 carries in the divisional round of the playoffs against the Kansas City Chiefs. That was a close game. If he had a three down back, who Sean McDermott is saying, we want Josh Allen to run with the ball less, maybe they would have beaten the Kansas City Chiefs and advanced to the AFC Championship. So I had Brees Hall originally. I changed my mind because of the loss of Levi Wallace. And I looked at the depth chart and I was like, dang it, man. This corner position really needs to be addressed. It really does. You can wait on running back maybe in the second round. So I'm going to say that the Buffalo Bills draft Andrew Booth, the cornerback from Clemson, to replace the loss of Levi Wallace. That'll be good for the Buffalo Bills defense. Uh, we already know this offense is high-powered, motor running. And the Buffalo Bills, if there's anything that's, well, they have a lot of weak points on defense. The run defense was was one of those. But uh, the secondary needs some help as well. So I do believe that they do address that with Andrew Booth here. Number 26, the last trade that we mock for this mock draft. The Tennessee Titans don't have a second-round pick. They could also be in that position where they're like, we have a good enough team to where we don't really want to, we could draft someone right now, but we could also wait to maybe the top of the second and draft a, a key player who could fall outside of the first round. So the Titans are, might be in a position where they could trade down. Well, our friend Joe Douglas, who already made a trade with the Atlanta Falcons, traded their number six pick in the second round, still has another second round pick Available. They have the third pick in the second round. They hit up the Tennessee Titans. They're like, listen, we got the third pick in the second round. Can we trade up? They're like, uh, I don't know. Like, you need to package something else. Uh, how about an additional first round pick for next year? Because you're additionally moving up. Like, what is it, nine spots? Something like that? Just are like, dang it. Dang it. All right. Here's what we're going to do. Since we love Traylon Burks so much, according to rumors out there, we want to trade up and grab Traylon Burks before anybody else does. So we'll do this. We will give you a second round pick, the third pick in the second round, and a first round pick next year so that we can move up to the number 26 pick and grab Traylon Burks, wide receiver, Arkansas. Three players that Joe Douglas loves so much in this draft that I've been hearing linked to Joe Douglas, the general manager, Ahmad Gardner, Jermaine Johnson, and Traylon Burks. He's going to try to make that a reality. So he's going to trade whatever he needs to trade to move on up in the draft board to grab all three guys. And at the end of the day, according to this mock draft, he does exactly that. Gardner to help out cornerback, Jermaine Johnson to help at edge, and then Burks to help at wide receiver. Successful draft for the New York Jets? I believe so. Number 27, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are in a position where they need some offensive line help after Ali Marpet retired. But you also need some secondary help as well. For the last two years since Tom Brady has been there, the secondary has been one of the worst things about this Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. They want to get that addressed. That, that secondary was the reason why they lost to the LA Rams last year. That long pass under two minutes to set up Matt Gay with a game-winning field goal in the playoffs was the main reason why they lost. They want to fix that. How do you fix it? Address your cornerback position. The next best available cornerback is Roger McCreary from Auburn. And this is why I believe that McCreary is the next pick at cornerback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. McCreary, what's good about him is that he's known in college football to be a lockdown man-to-man guy. They need that. They desperately need that because I know that Cooper Cup is Cooper Cup, can do amazing things, hard to lock him down. But if they had Roger McCreary in the playoffs, one-on-one with Cooper Cup, I mean, it would have been an improvement of what they had already. So I think that McCreary is the guy for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here at the number 27 pick. Number 28, the Philadelphia Eagles are picking with this pick. One guy that you might have missed that you're like, 
where is he? Why hasn't he drafted? Like some people said that he could be a top 20 pick. That's George Karloftis from Purdue, the Greek freak. Has not been taken, but I'm going to say that the Philadelphia Eagles draft him here. I sat through this mock draft and I completed it. I went back and forth, up and down, and I was like, there's no way that Karloftis falls this far to number 28. He's too freaking talented. But I was looking at the team needs and I was looking at how this draft plays out and I was like, Actually, yeah, it might be a possibility that Karloftis could be the odd man out, and whoever grabs him at the end of the first round is getting an absolute steal. So the Eagles address three needs, believe it or not, for their team. Defensive tackle, not the biggest need, but might be a need. Linebacker and edge help with George Karloftis. They resigned Derek Barnett to a one-year deal, but they didn't want to resign him. They just tested the free agent market. Nobody else wanted to sign. All right. Derek Barnett, come on back. So George Koloftis is going to be that replacement for Barnett, hopefully in the future. Number 29 and number 30 is owned by the Kansas City Chiefs. It doesn't matter which order you pick them in, but I believe that number 29 is going to be David Ajabo, the edge rusher from Michigan, who is recovering from a torn Achilles. We've stated this in previous mocks, but his recovery is going better than usual. Some people are saying that it could be a Cam Akers-like return from a torn Achilles. Whether that happens and he's ready by week one, whether he's going to have to sit out for the 2022 season, I think that's a risk that the Kansas City Chiefs are willing to take. If you're just one game away from the Super Bowl, that means you have a good roster and you're more bound to take some risks. Ajabo, I think he's a player that you could wait on. If it doesn't work out, I think the Chiefs are okay with that for 2022, knowing that in 2023, we're going to get potentially who could have been a top 10 pick in this draft. So Ajabo to the Kansas City Chiefs. And then at number 30 for the Chiefs, Jalen Peter Petrie is, is, I'm pronouncing his name incorrectly, but he's a safety from Baylor. The Chiefs are really interested in him because they want him to be the replacement for Tyron Matthew. He's not a first-round talent, so they could address uh, picking him in the second round. However, with Dax Hill still available on the board, if you need a replacement for Tyron Matthew, I, I highly doubt that you would take that need or take that risk in passing up on a safety when he's right there at your reach. So I'm going to say that Daxton Hill is going to be taken with the number 30 pick. Number 31, another guy that might be falling in draft boards. He might be the next best available offensive lineman after like maybe, gosh, I would say Charles Cross or Trevor Penning. Like he's that good. But the thing is, he's a center. So not a lot of teams need him. Tyler Linderbaum could be drafted here by the Cincinnati Bengals. They signed Ted Karras to play at center. Uh, But Ted Karras also played at guard in New England, so they might shift Karras to guard and then play Linderbaum at center. And and again, it's one of those things where a lot of teams need offensive line, but Linderbaum, what he's known for is being a center. That's all he's played throughout his career. And not a lot of teams need a center. Maybe the Philadelphia Eagles, if they want to find a replacement for Jason Kelsey, who might be retiring in the next year or so. But I think they're going to go ahead and, and, or Linderbaum is going to fall. Uh, in my mock draft, and I believe that the Cincinnati Bengals are going to pick him up and draft him at number 31. And now, to bring it home at number 32, the Detroit Lions. My two previous mock drafts, I had Quay Walker being drafted, linebacker from Georgia. And the reason being is because the Jaguars were interested in Walker in the second round. So I believe that they wanted to cock block him and draft him at number 32 so that the Jaguars don't get him at number 33. But, hey, I, I think they're going to pass up on that opportunity. And instead, what they're going to be doing, this might irk some Lions fans the wrong way, but hear me out. Matt Corral is going to have his name called to end the night for the Detroit Lions in the first round. And the reason behind Matt Corral is, yes, you do need a quarterback. He is the next best available quarterback, according to consensus rankings. And the interesting thing that you need to note about Matt Corral being taken is, here and not with the number 34 pick in the second round is because first round picks get a fifth year option. That means if they like Matt Corral, they can exercise that fifth year option when it gets to five years in the future and you don't have to spend so much money resigning him to a big massive deal. Like you could wait another year to save up your money. So I think there's a lot of uh, technicalities involved with it with as far as financially and the Lions find their quarterback in the future, they hope 
Fingers crossed. So Matt Corral falls to number 32 and is drafted by the Detroit Lions. Let me know your thoughts if you're a Lions fan. What do you think of that? Uh, but that's going to wrap up our mock draft. Um, at any point, you can go back to this video. You can pause and, and, and look at our picks. And again, I encourage you guys interact with us. I love uh, replying to comments and seeing what you guys are saying. So uh, definitely let me know your thoughts and your opinions in the comments below. I would love to reply to your comments. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well. Again, like we mentioned, live draft show Thursday, April 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The, the start of the NFL draft is when this show begins. Live reaction show. You can chat with us. We'll be reading your comments on air. Also, you can call into the show as well and chat with us uh, through there as you guys are watching your favorite team pick the player that you guys want. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to our podcast as well. Search on the iTunes app uh, on your phone, Time to Football. And you can listen to us on the go and follow us on social media. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Time to Football. We'll see you for the live draft reaction show Thursday, April 28th. Write it down. Can't wait.